Lecture seven is the is now developing the centered rectangular and rectangular nets. So centered rectangular versus just plain rectangular. And um, if you recall last lecture, we were talking about how uh, the way that we have gotten the the um, nets that we've created so far is by combining translation vectors with rotations. And we know we have one more symmetry element, which is mirror plane. So let's combine the mirror plane with uh, the translation to see if we get any uh, new nets. Um, the first way that you would do this is actually the generic way, which produces something called the centered uh, rectangular. So let me show you that. So um, we're going to again add M to that's our mirror plane to our translation uh, vector. So I, I described before that oftentimes we draw a straight line like this to represent a mirror plane, which we can do in, in 2D. It's really a mirror line in 2D, but we call it a mirror plane. And um, I draw a generic T1 at some angle to it. So this is a completely general case. Well, if I do that, what has to happen? Well, the mirror plane means that I have to have the vector appear over here, and that's going to fill my space. So essentially, this becomes T2. So now the criterion of a mirror plane combined with T1 in any general angle between the two results in another translation vector going in the opposite way. And we could write a little theorem for this about how we operate um, M on T, it produces a T over this way. We're not going to do that yet because it's self-evident here, but I just want to you know, get you ready for the, for the, um, for the uh, notation. For example, we can have an operation T1, and what we're going to do is we operate on it with M and what I'm showing you here is it produces another translation vector. It's kind of obvious, so we don't have to do it. But if we wanted to, we could talk about this angle. And it makes that angle. And that, uh, of course, one of the criteria we see right away is that T2 has to equal you know, T1. So uh, just to go back to this operation language, we'll see this later. This is operation 1. This is operation 2. And it produces a third one, right? So anytime you have two operations to produce a third, we're going to call these things little um, combination theorems. Which is named, I believe, after Bernie Vench, the longtime um, uh, professor that had taught this class for, for many years. And so combination theorems uh, are simply, and notice how um, there's different ways to do the operations. Sometimes there's another convention from long ago where, where you do them uh, in a row. But we're going to stick with the con uh, physics convention. As you know, in physics, if you have one operator and then you operate on it, or, or even you have something else and you operate on it, the operation comes in front and then it produces this. So remember, like, for example, in math, when you have a gradient operator, Right, then uh, um, which produces scalar, the operator is in front of this this guy, right? So we're going to stick with that that notation. Just keep in mind, I had T one, and I then operated on it with M, and it makes uh, this T two. We could describe more details here as to that operation because obviously the two angles, like I said, have to equal. But we're not going to do it. Yeah, it's like obvious by sight. So. What this tells us is that, uh, um, you know, this is the case. T1 has to equal T2. For the general case, the angle, oops, sorry, the angle, remember that's how we do our notation for angle, between T1 and T2 has to be general. Right? So um, I can already tell that my writing is starting to get a little, which means that I'm, I'm occupying a lot, of, um, a lot of bits here. So let me... Clear this and start again. Then, now that we've established that that's the case, um, let's draw this a little bit more thoroughly with the lattice points 
points. So I'm not going to draw the uh, mirror plane anymore because I already showed what happens in the relationship between T1 and T2. But I will draw them. And um, of course, that means that my original point, I was the lattice point I was operating on, is there and here. Now we could draw a point up here on this line because we know we can draw another T1 here. Sorry, another T2 here. We can draw another T1 here. It has to give us a lattice point. But then we can make this symmetrical, right? We could say, all right, well, that means, of course, you know, if I start to fill out this lattice, we're going to have, without having to do the rest, but you can do the rest by observation. It looks like this. And then, of course, there's a lattice point here, lattice point here. So that's how we start to realize that actually, um, when you take the most general case of T1 at any angle to T2 for the intersection of the mirror plane with a translation vector, uh, the two have to be equal, which we already talked about. And uh, we end up with actually a new lattice which is a double cell right but remember uh, one of the rules about the standard cell is to create something that reflects the symmetry so this is the case where the little diamond maybe to the most sophisticated observer you know actually does reflect because uh, uh, this is symmetric, it, it may to the very sophisticated reflect, you know, the centered, um, uh, center rectangular, but, but to more explicitly show that the standard cell would be this cell. And I call it centered because there's an extra lattice point in the middle and it's double, remember, the size of a primitive uh, cell. Actually, more than no, yeah, double the size too. Double the, it's double the area. Double the area. Um, notice in the in this cell that we can now say, by the way, that T one is uh, is at an angle with respect to T two of ninety degrees because in this centered configuration we would label this T one and this T two. Let's say. So they're still equal, of course, um, uh, in the old case, but now in the in this new case, they're not equal anymore, right? So again, this just to sh goes to show you that the standard cell does depend on those rules, right? And in this case. The first stand, remember, the first criterion was that you pick the shortest vectors, but that would produce this over here. But you know, the shortest vectors don't give you the symmetry. And so if you pick a cell that gives you the symmetry, the shortest vectors would be these, and that's why uh, this is the convention in which uh, we do this. Okay, so obviously if we have this general case and we get the center rectangular, how do we get rectangular? Well, it must be from a special case. And it's kind of ironic that you think that the primitive rectangle would come from the general case, but it's not. Uh, there is one special case, which you can almost see by, by definition, that will get us there. And that's the following. If we uh, now uh, start off right by saying, um, if I take that M plane again, Which is, I remember, in 2D, it's a, not a mirror plane, but a mirror line. 
and um, let's pick a point on which we want the translation to be operating. Instead of making the general case, we're going to make a very specific case. That t1 is perpendicular to the mirror plane. Uh, so, of course, that means that this is t1, right, by definition, it produces another t1, and that doesn't define a 2D lattice, because we told you before that a 2D lattice cannot be defined, obviously, by vectors uh, that are parallel, because you only have one dimension. So, um, it is consistent with t1, so we have spacing of t1 in this direction, but we still have no t2. Well, if we want to avoid the general case again, then obviously uh, T2 has to be along this axis. So right away, they're orthogonal. And that, that's, oops, sorry about that. And that's consistent because uh, this thing just reflects around itself, right? It's on the mirror line, and therefore it uh, doesn't move. So uh, in this specific case, there's the reason you get the simple rectangle is that there's no need to recast the, um, the lattice. It shows a symmetry and it's the shortest vectors. So simply, let me grab my observation here. If you automatically make the first T1 perpendicular to the mirror plane, A primitive rectangular cell, T1 uh, to T2, angle between them is 90 degrees, and in the general case, which is the rectangular case, T1 and T2 do not have the same magnitude. There you have it, the rectangular net 